in this video I'm going to describe how to sew the double piped pocket with flap according to the techniques used in the classic tailoring techniques book by Cabrera and Myers. So let's look at the different pieces that are uh, comprise the double piped pocket with flap. This is the hip pocket on the suit coat. Here is the pocket flap and it's got wool on the outside lining on the inside. And then that piping that they're talking about is this small, uh, narrow, horizontal piece here that's called the piping. It's flat. It isn't corded uh, piping. It's flat piping. And then the double is the piping underneath. So if we were to tuck that flap inside, we'd see the double piped pocket. It's also referred to as a jetted pocket, and that's just as correct a term for it as the double piped pocket with flap. So we'll talk about how to construct this. When you're constructing the pocket flap and the double piped pocket uh, or jetted pocket, you'll want to make sure that the pattern for the flap is just a, a little bit bigger, maybe an eighth of an inch bigger than the intended opening. That's because as the coat is worn around the curve of the body, we want the curve of the flap to have enough ease to go outside um, of the curve of the coat. So we'll build that in when we build the flap first before we build the double piped pocket opening. So here we have the paper patterns on top of the wool pieces or the pocket bag uh, poly cotton that I use for that and uh, showing the dimensions. So starting with making the pocket flap first um, you want to cut a piece of wool, uh, and these are teaching samples now, so you can see what I'm doing. You want to cut a piece of wool, a little piece of fusible without seam allowance, so that we don't bulk up the seam on that when we bag out the pocket flap with its lining. I like to thread mark the top of that interfacing right there, so that when we do, turn this and press it that we can still see uh, the seam line on that pocket flap. The pocket bag in this uh, method is cut all in one. The length of it is cut in one so that we will stitch it to the pocket, fold it up, and stitch it again in a later step. And uh, then the bottom of the bag is on a fold rather than having a seam. It's very common to also cut, these, cut this in two pieces, um, as we've done before, and have two pieces sewn together at the bottom for the bag. It doesn't matter, uh, whatever is your preference. We have two pieces of wool for the piping, the upper piping and the lower piping on the pocket opening. And then I cut a pocket facing as per the uh, Cabrera Myers method. Uh, you'll remember on this jacket, they don't have a facing here. The wool facing that the Cabrera Myers method uses, the facing goes here, so that when the pocket flap is lifted up, we see wool here, and I prefer that. I prefer to see some wool there rather than the lining here. Once you have the pocket flap cut, fused, and hand thread marked, then you'll want to pin and roll, uh, roll pin uh, the lining to the wall. And you want to roll pin that so that the wall is on a larger circle than the lining. What that does, once you trim the seam, clip, and turn, is make sure that the lining doesn't roll out like this because it's been stitched to be smaller and as it goes around the curve of the body that lining won't peek out. You can do that roll pinning around a variety of things. This is an oatmeal box. Some people like to do that. Uh, this is a piece of tubing. That's often a handy shape. Sometimes for the body shape 
something larger that simulates the uh, curve of the torso is often handy. Whatever you use, you want to make sure that you roll pin the pocket flap so that the lining can't uh, peek out. So this is a teaching sample uh, simulating the front of the coat. These are the piping pieces and then here's the pocket flap that's been bagged out and hand thread marked. Once you have the pocket flap made, and you should do that first, you need to measure to make sure you know exactly the measurement of the flap. We want the measurement of the opening to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than the finished um, measurement on the flap. That's so that the pocket flap can be eased ever so slightly into the opening when we're done. So I'm going to set that aside. I like to fuse a little um, interfacing here to firm up that area and then thread mark through to the outside so that I can see the slight curve of the pocket placement line and the beginning and end of it, make, making sure that those lines are parallel. Then we have two pieces of uh, wool for the piping. The upper piping is two inches by eight inches and the lower piping is two and a half by eight inches. The reason that's a little wider is because later we're going to be stitching the pocket bag to the bottom of this and so we just need a little extra half inch for that seam allowance in that later step. Once you have that thread marked, the next step is to place the piping pieces on the right side of the coat, not the wrong side, the right side of the coat, right sides together, right along that pocket placement line. And you'll pin that in a slight curve and pin that in place. I like to have my first pin and last pin marking where those uh, parallel ending marks are because eventually here you'll pin the second one on covering up those ending marks completely and so I like to mark that with the pin. In the next step you will machine stitch back stitching at the end mark over and stitch over to the other end mark back stitch on the bottom piping and the upper piping. This amount that you stitch away from that center uh, thread marked line, that is the amount that you're setting up the width of your uh, piping. I like to have that be a scant quarter of an inch, three sixteenths is good. Once you have those two parallel lines stitched, make sure, looking on the back side, that you have ended them at exactly the same spot. I've already clipped this open, so I know that it's, it's exactly parallel. But this is the stitching and the clipping that will set up the width of each of the pipings, or jetted top and jetted bottom. And also, it sets up the length. And this is where the precision sewing and measuring needs to happen because after you've clipped, then it's too late. When you're clipping, clip down the middle and into each corner to allow the turning to happen, which is the next step. Reaching through, pull the piping to the wrong side working gently and carefully in those clipped corners. Take that to the ironing board and press that seam open. This is critical because on the outside, we want that pressed open so that the plane, the wall of the trouser, transitions beautifully on the same level plane onto the wall of the piping. Once you have that seam pressed open, get it out of the way, press the other side open, continue that pressing down through the seam allowance of the piping. Uh, that will come in handy here in a minute. While you're at the um, ironing board, 
make sure to press this triangle that you've cut, that you've clipped into the corners and that creates the triangle at the end. Press that out. What that sets up is this very nice parallel end to the, uh, to the pocket opening. Next, wrap. You've pressed this open and you want to wrap the piping around that seam allowance. You're using the seam allowance as your guide, which is why it's important to stitch so uh, with such precision, precision in the previous uh, step. You're wrapping the piping around that seam allowance and not folding it over, keeping it flat inside. What that does is sets up a beautiful flat piping here. You'll want to pin that in place all along and then pin in place the piping uh, on the top and make sure that they are symmetrical side to side, top to bottom, and also the same measurement width or height of piping uh, from side to side. We want to, this to be as precision perfect as possible. Once you have the bottom piping and the top piping perfect, then hand sew with a needle and thread, just stitching in the ditch invisibly and beautifully to set that in place so that the piping can't roll out and change its width. Before you start that hand sewing, here at the end, you're going to want to make sure that the seam allowance is beautifully flat, the triangle sticking out nicely, making a beautifully squared off end to this pocket. Make sure before you start that hand sewing that the coat front is beautifully flat in the corners and that the two pipings fit beautifully into that corner, that end point that you've clipped. Once you have the two pipings beautifully hand stitched, uh, stitched in the ditch, then uh, hand baste them together for a, a good press so that they'll always live in perfect parallel harmony this way. Once you have the two piping uh, pieces set onto the coat. Next it's time to put the pocket facing onto your pocketing piece. I like to just serge this facing and then flat zigzag it onto the pocketing piece. That makes a very flat application. This again is the teaching sample, so that's why I have a label here. Ignore that piece. Uh, so here is our pocketing piece with the facing zigzagged on and it gets stitched just with a quarter inch or a half inch seam uh, to the bottom of the bottom piping piece. This is the one that is a half inch larger uh, cut, a half inch wider than the top one and it's because we're going to seam the bag onto the bottom of it. Before we go any further, we want to make sure that we have hand sewn the prong that is on the inside here. You can see it better on this side. You can hand sew or machine sew that prong right there to beautifully finish off the edge of that opening. Next, take the basting thread out. And this is where we insert the pocket flap. Inserting the pocket flap, this line is the pocket placement line, which is the center of that. So center the flap. And there should be just a little bit of ease so that the flap will nicely round over the hip, uh, the curve of the torso while the client is wearing the coat. 
You can machine stitch in the ditch here to hold the flap in place. And then on the back, the final step is to bring up the facing on the pocket bag, place it so that when the flap is lifted, we see wool in here. Pin both sides and then lifting the front of the coat out of the way and the flap out of the way. Machine stitch down each side of the pocket bag. Give a final press, trim the seams down, and there's your double piped pocket with flap.